Susan Brent? Yes. You're going to pull on. They've sent a car for you. Do you know why? I've no idea. Hør hende ud til vognen. Mr. Brandt? Yeah? They reported your arrival from downstairs and from the airport. I'm Lieutenant Ickel Knudsen. How do you do? How do you do? If they pay policemen in America the way they pay us, it's quite a sacrifice. You and your sister must be very close. I'm not even sure I like her. They used the knife in the act. Not razor sharp, but sharp enough. You get prints? Your sisters? We took it here in headquarters. Less from the handle of the knife, the murder weapon. We need 19 points of similarity. We've got at least twice that many. Motive, opportunity, witnesses. There can be no doubt. Right. Our interrogation rooms are much like yours, unpleasantly bare. You may talk to her here. Thank you. Easy, Susan. Easy does it. I didn't think it'd come, Mike. What'd you expect me to do? I don't know. Now I wish I hadn't written the letter. It's too late for that. I didn't kill him, Mike, but I'm glad he's dead. At least those tears are not for him. That's something. All right, let's open this up. What kind of a guy was Tony Martinelli? Anything rotten, you name it. I'm glad he's dead. You said that before. Why didn't you leave him? We were a team, a little soft shoe and fast patter. We were going to be married, but Tony was a busy boy. A woman in every town, and there were a lot of towns. Anybody here? Sure. You know her name? Inga. Inga somebody. Ever talked to her? I had to. They were going to run out on me. How'd you find that out? I found a ticket in his wallet. He was stealing from me, Mike. He made the bookings, and he collected our pay, but he didn't give me half. Not nearly half. How many tickets? One or two? He was going to leave me without a dime. All I wanted was the props that I'd paid for. You didn't answer my question. How many tickets? One or two? Two. One for me, a ride home on a cattle boat to the States, and another first-class plane ticket to Rome. What did Inga say when you told her you knew she was running out with Tony? She said it was the first time she'd heard about it. I didn't believe her then, Mike, but I, I do now because she seemed surprised when I told her that Tony was going to Rome. Did you tell anybody else that Martinelli was leaving town? Virginia Kelly, a friend of mine, she's on the bill with us. I didn't tell anybody else. Hello. Yes, I'm Miss Kelly. Who? Mike Brent. I never heard of you. Yes, I know her. But I can't meet you then. Well, it would take me at least. All right. I'll be there. Applegate. But then who could put that on a marquee? With you, it wouldn't matter. She told you Martinelli was 
running out on her? Yes. She was upset, and I don't blame her. I'd hate to be stranded here with only a ticket to the States on a lousy freighter. Have you ever crossed on a freighter? No, I haven't. I did. But never again. I'd swim first. Do you think Martinelli had another girlfriend? Could be. Could you find out? I think so. I can try. Might help. Well, I want to help. That's why I'm here. I've known Susie for a long time. We've worked together on the same bill all over the world. How long have you known Martinelli? Ever since she picked him up. You like him? Think all the dead. That's a good rule. But it doesn't apply to Tony. He gave your sister a lot of hell. If I'd been Susie, I'd use an ax on him. He deserved to be killed. But Susie didn't do it. I'm sure she didn't. Do you know who did? I'm late. I have to run. You will excuse me, won't you? Sure. Look, why don't you call me tomorrow? I'll do that. up on the terrace. I saw you there. Oh? What did he want? Nothing much. But ask me a few questions. You should have stopped by. I didn't want to break in on your date. Well, you don't be silly. I don't think you two should have met. Well, there he is. Mike. Mike, I want you to meet a friend of mine. This is Arthur Miller. How are you? His name's Brent. Mike Brent. Your sister's a friend of Virginia's. Anything I can do for a friend of hers will be a pleasure. Very kind, but there's nothing. How about a lawyer? That's been taken care of. If anything comes up, I'll give you a ring. I don't have a card with me, but I'll give you my phone number. Thanks. I'm staying here at the Europa. Have the police let you see your sister yet? Yes, they've been very nice. It must be a great comfort to her to know that you were able to get over here. Business pressures keep most men chained to their desks. I had some vacation coming. Well, we won't keep you. Call me if I can do anything. I'll do that. Bye. Bye.
breaking and entering, Mr. Brent, is a crime here as well as in your country. You had no business going to that apartment, no matter what the provocation. What do you expect me to do, stand there and whistle Dixie? You should have called us. We had a man on the ground. We could have apprehended the prowler. This kid knew exactly what he was after. He didn't stop wrecking the joint till he found it. Yes, 72 pictures of Alexander Hamilton, $100 bills. The serial numbers are all the same. It's counterfeit. This could put Susan in the middle of another mess. Another one. Where'd you get this from, Susan? We got it from a head waiter who got it from Tony Martinelli. He didn't mention it before. We haven't mentioned it to Susan either. You know, Jensen is with me. Under no circumstances were you ever to bring Jensen here. I've told you that. You should have known better. I couldn't drive. Where's Jensen now? I took him to Keep's room. How much did he get? Well, 60 or 70 bills, perhaps more. Jacobson didn't. Go on. Jacobson didn't what? Jacobson hasn't had the chance to count it before the American broke in on him. You weren't followed? No. You're sure? Yes. Flat nigger. Inga, take him out to the boat, will you please? Sure. You better give him a couple of drinks first. I'm not very sad. Well, they come back to you, don't ask time. Jacobson's a fool. He doesn't use his head. He'd no reason to kill Martinelli. Now this, he's messed it up again. I agree, but that doesn't solve our problem. What do we do now? Cancel out. Stop distribution. We can call back out. No. We go right on. What happened to you two? It's not Jacobson's job to crawl in windows. Wait, just a minute. Well, no, no, no. I will finish first. Jacobson had to do it because you were fools enough to hire a thief for a messenger. And if Inga hadn't learned that Martinelli had a ticket to Rome, even that mistake could not have been corrected. What are you doing here? So, now you know. I'm sorry. Get out, wait in the corridor. What are you going to do about that? I don't know yet, but I know one thing. I'm not going to let anything or anyone stop me now. Two million in one day, one hour. And it was I who planned it for ten years, ten rotten years. Do you think it was easy for me to beg, to steal? A man who once commanded ships of war. Yet I had to do all that and more to get the plates, the paper set this up. And I did it. Not you. We worked together for five years. Do you think I'd stop now? You invested three years. Do you want to throw all that away? No, I can't. Of course not. Jacobson told me what happened before he left with Inga. 
Martinelli's partner, the, the American girl, Susan, must have known what he was carrying. Yes. Her brother's here from the States. How did you find out? Virginia. Good. He's staying at the Hotel Europa. Then we'll start there. I think we'll have Jacobson see this American. Tony was stealing from me. I told you that. All I wanted to get was what belonged to me. All you wanted to do was get your hot little hands on that money. What money? All I wanted was my props. The Indian clubs? Yes, they were mine. You're lying. You went back for the money. If there was any, half of it was mine. Even if it was counterfeit? Counterfeit? Mike, I don't know what you're talking about. There was $7,200 in counterfeit bills stacked in those Indian clubs of yours now. Where did you get it? $7,200? I haven't seen that kind of money my whole life, my good or bad. I don't know what you're talking about, so help me. Stop lying to me. I'm not lying before God, I'm not lying. Did that little heel of yours know anything about photography? Answer me! Yes, he, he wanted me to pose in the nude, but I never did. Really, I never did. Did he know a photo engraver? I can't tell you, Mike. I mean, I don't know. You tramp. Who was the photo engraver? I don't know, Mike. Please, I don't know. Tell me his name. Okay, I'm a tramp. <laughs> I'm anything you say I am. <laughs> but please, Mike, no. Mike, we don't work this way. Sometimes that's the only way. One one way is illness and trouble. A man can lose his balance and try too hard and do things and say things he wouldn't let anyone else do or say. Let me take it for the day. If I had a like this, I'd keep it wrapped in a cotton bag and take it out and look at it. Arthur has a very rich one. Oh. That I like. I had a run with one of these once. I was in a proud. Make it sure throw a lot of mud in your face. I'll buy that. Check, please. Yes, sir. Holy cow. What's the matter? I walked out on the bill at the Angleterre, and I don't think I've got enough Danish currency to handle this check. Oh, I've got this. Could you break this? Thanks for the compliment, but uh, it's too big for me to break. Nice and crisp, too. I print a fresh batch every morning. Forget the SOS. I can handle this. I'm not surprised. You look like you can handle most anything. Let's go. Oh, it's such a lovely day. Let's not go home. I think we'd better get back. Miller will need his car. Uh-uh. Said he wouldn't leave until this evening. What's with you and this Miller? No passes, if that's what you mean. Arthur's just one of those nice people. 
What are you asking? I'm nosy. <laughs> Oh, this is nice. Yeah. Piece of string and a bent pin and you'd be in business. You'll have to dig the worm. You know, for a gal who didn't like geography, I've seen an awful lot of it. I'll bet you have. Too darn much. This would be the rose-covered cottage pit. Laundry, vacuum cleaners, diapers, all that work and no applause. That spotlight only gets in your eyes, Mike. I don't know what you do for a living, but I bet it's better than singing for your supper. Especially if you haven't got what needs to be really big. Well, I've given you the story of my life. Want autographed? Keep shoving, kid. You'll make it. Those are kind words, stranger. You know something? You're a nice guy. I wouldn't go that far. You're going to find out the name of Martinelli's girlfriend for me, did you? Beautiful day. All the men want. How can you talk about other women? <laughs> well, they're all nice to talk about. That's spoken like a true male. It's beginning to wonder why you came to Denmark. Oh, quit wondering and answer my question. Her name's Inga Jorgensen. The major at the cafe knew that much. You're a big help. There's probably no more than a thousand Inga Jorgensen's in Copenhagen. Why are you so interested? Susan didn't kill Martinelli. Someone else did. I had to have a reason. Can you think of one? Because he's a dirty little heel. Central 2448, please. Lieutenant Knudsen. Egon, I just made contact. I don't know how or when, but I just tore up my room. Same treatment they gave Martinelli's. Only the gun you gave me. The gun is a small loss. We'll supply an hour. Yes, a beautiful girl, a beautiful sports car. It has the feel of something carefully arranged. And to Erickson, our informer arranged something for you two. Be sure to meet him. He said you're nowhere.
Too. I like them a lot. Thanks. Underneath them. Yes, sir. Lieutenant Knudsen? Speaking. Here, can this is Mike. You can scratch one stool pigeon. Our boy Hans isn't with us anymore. It was reported to me. I was just leaving. Yes. Our friend Inga has come to light again. She has company she doesn't know about. Hmm. At the bar, Texas, on Nihong. I will tell my people to expect you. Okay. <laughs> I knew you would. We will go to another place, a good place. I will show you a good time. <laughs> she left. Well, I couldn't get here any sooner. Well, that's okay. My partner was outside. He picked her up as she left. He called. She is at the gold diggers now. <laughs> a lousy joint, as you would say. That have been in America for a month. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Oh, I had lots of fun. I will show you where she is. <laughs> Good. They don't bother me. Don't look now. There's something coming that should bother you. She'll be sitting on the stool next to yours. Check, please. It's all yours, Mike. Good luck.
You and your husband are the best dancers on the floor. Especially you. <laughs> He's not my husband. I have no husband. Good. How did you know I speak English? I didn't. I, uh, I hoped you did. With your hand, please. Thank you. Let's go again. What are you drinking? Scotch. Two double scotches, please. I like Americans. I like Danish girls, too. Oh, you funny. Uh, do you want to dance? But uh, I know a good one. We can go there and dance. Here's how. How about another one for the road? Yes, I would like that. The same. long road ahead of us. And we'll have fun all the way. If you want anything, ask for it. Let's go. We're wasting time. Say goodbye, Mike. Don't leave. Take me home with you, please. I'm not leaving. We're working on it. We could get lucky. We may not. I'm sorry about the last time. Oh, it's not the slap that hurt. It's just that that slap showed me what a rotten mess I've made of my whole life. I said I was sorry. But I might have been lying. How could you have known? I wasn't, but I might have been. It's been such a long time. Yeah. Mike. open. Uh, I thought I heard someone say, come in. So you made yourself at home. You can get in trouble that way, you know that. Mr. Brandt, I'm here on business that will be mutually profitable. My client now empowers me to offer you 50% of the face value. You're wasting your breath and my time. 55%. 60%. You know the price. $100 a bill. This is ridiculous. You acquired the property by accident. Let's dispose of it without getting into it. I'll spread it around a little at a time. After tomorrow, I'll be in Rome, then London, then Paris. 80%. Get out of here. You drive a hard bargain, Mr. Brent. 95%. Dollar for dollar. That's the deal. Do you have them with you? Do you? Among friends, just to keep it that way. On the desk, one at a time. One, two. It is genuine. Tell your boy to get away from that door. 
Go back to Cape. Speak in English. Go away. Everything is all right. Seventy. Seventy-one. Seventy-two. You drive a hard bargain, Mr. Feinstein. It's refreshing to me. <laughs> How badly did he hurt Lord? He could still walk. Central 1448. Lieutenant Knudsen. It's me again. Lund just left. Your men can't miss him. What's the other one? No, there were two of them. One I couldn't see. Stay right where you are. Taxi will pick you up. The same cab you used before. It'll be there in 15 minutes. I want you to leave that counterfeit money with me as soon as you can. Do you want me to leave the good money, too? What are you talking about? All my life, I've been looking for a way to make a thief pay for the rope that hangs him. How much did you take from him? I didn't hook him for enough. My expenses have been running pretty high. I want it all here, safe in the office. Keep your eyes open. Yeah. The other one may still be around. Okay. If Brent puts any of that bad money in circulation, we're through. He's got good money. He knows the difference. He'll use the good money first. How can we be sure? We can't. But fear is the thing you can smell. I can smell it now. Let's wait it out. No. Three weeks from today. Everywhere. All at once. In all the major cities of Europe and the United States, our paper goes into circulation. In one day, one hour, we make a profit of two million. If Brent dumps his first, won't be able to break even 100. My wife went into the streets to make this possible. It has cost that much. Wait here. Follow the American. I want to know where he goes. Yes. I shall see Jensen. He should have handled this himself.
hen på sit tillid. Hvor har du været? Jeg har lagt et hotel, og man har mig. Jeg vil ikke have dem her, så jeg gik til Virginia Kelly. Han har lagt mig der. Lone er død. De har bare fisket hans kroppe ud af kanalen med en bullet i ham. Ja. Jeg fandt Jensen død også i hans office. En testbullet. Fire from a gun found in Jensen's office. This bullet killed Jensen, and this one killed Hans Eriksson. Mm. We're just checking the bullet that killed Don. I'm sure the bullet came from the same gun, too. Hmm. Markings are identical. Did you identify the murder weapon? Yes. It is a gun I lent to you. With my fingerprints on it. Only yours. Hi. You must read minds. I was hoping you'd drop by. What if I hadn't? Could you have come after me? I might. Have a drink? Mm, I'd love it. Brandy, I'd stand it, please. The lady's through for the night. How's the gentleman with the fine taste in automobiles? Arthur Miller? Fine, as far as I know. I may have to ask his help. Before I go knocking at his door, I'd like to know more about him. Well, it's just as I told you. He's married, she's rich, and she's older than he is. That's all. Where is she? I don't know. Paris, Rome, someplace. We don't spend much time together. Next question. You know, you ask a lot of questions. Being with you is like being on the witness stand. I sometimes think you have the feeling I killed Tony. Did you? No. But there was a time when I had a reason to. Hi, right, Susan. I'm scared. You know, I've known her for years. She's in trouble and I haven't even been to see her. What does that make me? Normal. This, uh, Miller. He's just a friend. What do you ask? I never believed in this first sight business, but uh, a guy can take a second look. If he wants to. He wants to. All right, then go right ahead and look. Don't just sit here. Let's go out and tour us and walk. All right. All right. I'll go change and be right back. a good time. Mr. Brent, we've met before. Yes, we were both on the same plane. Yes, apparently for the same reason. My lawyer sent his partner to talk to you. But you were too much for him. The balances shift and change, Mr. Brent. The man who came to see you is dead. Mr. Jensen, my lawyer, is dead too. Both of them killed by bullets from your gun. The police have that gun. What's that got to do with me? You're going to give me the money, all of it or the police will get a phone call telling them where to find the man whose fingerprints are on the gun. It's plain. You're going to do business with me, on my terms. Shall we go, Mr. Brent? Why not? Go 
Oh, no. This way. gentleman is. No, I'm sorry, but I don't know. Perhaps... Uh, oh, he's been gone quite a while. I'll check. Uh, the telephone's too. Thank you. This way, Mr. Brent. Man who wants to talk business, you don't say much. It's the first thing you've said since we left the nightclub. We're going aboard. After you, Mr. Brent. You know. Oh, I don't know. I haven't seen him. Well, he was talking about you just a few minutes ago. He wanted me to take him to your place, and he just disappeared. Well, I saw your car outside, and I thought he might be with you now. What do you want to see me about, you know? Well, about his sister, I imagine. And you did offer to help. Oh. Well, apparently I must have missed him. You've seen quite a lot of him, aren't you? If he doesn't show up soon, this will be the last time. <laughs> Well, I'd be glad to take you home, Virginia, but I have an appointment. Here, use my car. I won't be needing it. Blonde or brunette? Redhead. I don't seem to be in much demand tonight. Thanks, Arthur. I'll get the car back to you tomorrow. I'd like to talk with you, Miss Kelly. Police. Why, what about? We have a car waiting. Get dressed, Miss Kelly. I'll wait outside.
How do you feel? About the way I expected. Oh, you knew you were going to be roughed up. I clipped your messenger boy and walked into your parlor. I had to expect a few lumps. Huh? You expected it. Then you weren't disappointed. No, well, you did pretty good. Do I get the money or do I mail the letter to the police? Neither. I assure you. You didn't have to do this. You couldn't have driven me away. You're not going to mail a letter to the police and you're not going to dump me over the side. What makes you so sure? Cut these ropes. They're uncomfortable. <laughs> Look. From now on, you're going to worry about my comfort. If I'm not around, you're in trouble. It's as simple as that. Who's in this with you? That's a pretty silly question. Your sister? How do you know she's my sister? What do you want? I want it in. I am in. I'm going to stay in. You've got a nice thing going for you here. I want a piece of it. You're going to wind up in the canal. No, I'm not. If I'm not around to put a message on a postcard every day, a different message, the police wind up with all your pretty paper. And nobody, nobody breaks a $100 bill any place. You're bluffing. All right, call my bluff and see. But don't try to run away. You can't run fast enough or far enough. My husband would like to see you. Please go. So now we have acquired the partner. Are you serious? What else can we do? The woman is in prison. Uh, the safest place in Denmark. If she opens her mouth, we're done. She can ruin us in a minute. So now the smell of fear is with you again. The balance is exactly even. We have nothing to worry about. He's a hungry man, greedy. He's arranged it so that we must take the very best care of him. I don't like it. Oh, stop shivering. Our interests are now his interests. He wants money. He has to cooperate with us or he doesn't get it. He's too smart. He may be useful. We've got Jacobson. He was with you through the war. We can trust him. Jacobson is a sailor, a great one. And that's all he is. This man can go anywhere. A few weeks from today, it will not matter what his man or his people do or say. Till then, he will be our guest. Here? Yeah. No. No, that will not be wise. My wife walks near the darkness again. She shouldn't be disturbed. Go and get him. As of now, you have a piece of it. Turn round. You've got a bigger knife up there. How much is something that remains to be settled? Sure. Let's go, Mr. Brent. Call me Mike. We're going to be seeing a lot of each other. Virginia, what a pleasant surprise. I didn't expect you so soon. You sound happy. I am, now that you're here. Everybody's gone. The place is deserted. I was alone. I don't like being alone. You may stay off. Everybody's off. How about a drink? Would be nice. Arthur, you're quite a guy. Here we are. The fun and beauty. I'm going to have to bum a ride back to town. Oh, later, darling. Later. Arthur, please, let's not spoil it. Besides, I don't think your wife would approve. My wife's in Paris, dear. And distance does lend enchantment. No sparkle today. 
You sound tired. Police kept me up all night. What the police want with you? Asking questions about you, about everybody. About me? What did you tell them? They weren't really very interested in you. And what did you say? What could I say? Nothing. The way they kept hammering at me question after question, they must have thought I was a thief. Surely not. And I wasn't the only one. They had Inga there, Tony Martinelli's girl. Oh? Like a crazy merry-go-round. Mike was asking me questions about Inga, and the police were asking both of us questions about Mike. Why should the police be interested in Mr. Brent? I found out why. After they let me go, I went straight to see Susan. She told me her brother's a policeman, a detective. And he's been using me, and I don't know why. I see. He's working with them. You know how policemen are, like that. Now he's gone. They can't find him anywhere. You've had a rough night. It's the worst I've ever had. It was rougher on Inga. And she's still there, so they must have placed a charge against her. City, if you'll excuse me, I'll tell Hartman. I'm in no hurry. I'm sorry, Virginia. I have an appointment. You got all kinds of time when I arrived just a few minutes ago. At least you let me finish my drink. He's a policeman. He's working with him. Stop him.
What are you doing here? Turn around. Must have got a rake. I'll look around the grounds. Yes, get, get him down here. All right. How did he get away? Doesn't matter. He can't know much. Only the three of us know it all. Now we'll have to run and wait. Try again. You take this car. Go by the south road, the long way, carefully. I'll meet you at the boat. What about the girl? Leave her. What's the difference? Let's go. You have the money here in the trunk. I've got the plates with me. I'll go by motorcycle along a different route. The two Mercedes will be much too conspicuous. Come on, get in. phone lines are cut and I've got to get out of here. As soon as I'm gone, get to the nearest phone, call Knudsen and tell him what happened. Do you understand? Do you understand? Yeah. All right, the key's in the car. In the switch. Good girl. Mike! Switch it to the radio room. Oh, that's fine, sir. I'm on again. Yes. Did he tell you where I was going?
Hvordan er det, de kører, mand? De må ikke være rigtig kloge. Hvis de endelig vil begå selvmord, så kører jeg ind i en mur og ikke i min sporvogn. Vi skulle have nogen i øvrigt her. Vi prøver, om vi kan stoppe dem her. Eller her. Motorcyklen forfølges af en Mercedes 300 S. L Sportscoupé 226 Z. instead.
Jacobson. Freut mich, dass du hier bist. Wir kämpfen. Sei ruhig, Liebling. not come out. He is where he belongs at last. A sailor who sleeps in the sea. Thank your ship in the war and many others to be on the losing side of the only difference between a hero and a derelict. Thank you for everything. Have a good trip. Thanks is a pretty sharp, worn word. That's the only one I know. That's the only one that is. Happy trip. And comfort's up as yours.
your reservations two weeks from today. This isn't so long.